You're listening to Dear Alice, a lifestyle approach to interior design. Hey, everybody. We are talking about Suzanne Hall's favorite topic today. Art. Art. I'm so excited to talk about art. You should name one of your kids art. Oh, I should. <laughs> <laughs> My unborn child. Little art. Yes. Oh, boy. <laughs> so, hey, everybody. Suze is expecting. Isn't that exciting? And we're going to call it art. We're going to call it little art. <laughs> yes, until it's born. We don't little know arty. if it's a boy or girl yet, no, but I think, either way. I think that's a good art unisex subjective. name. <laughs> okay, we're back. Um, <laughs> anyway, so today's question is how to find art you love, especially if you don't live live in an area with galleries. Well, yes. What I have to say about that is there's probably some everywhere has local artists. I don't like yeah. I don't think you can go to a place even in, like in the deep part of the mountains, you know, like you can find artists if you start looking around and there's usually some types of gallery strolls. I think no like in a lot of the cities here in Utah, we have a lot of gallery strolls which is a great place to see local artists and start to kind of dip your toe into the art game, but if you really don't have, if you live in the middle of nowhere, there's zero galleries. Um, good news for you is, is that you have a telephone with data. So, yeah. so we're going to introduce you to some ways to start trying to understand um, ways to find art that you love as you're kind of exploring what, what you do love and what you want to surround yourself by. Cause we always say like that last layer um, of the home, when you actually hang the art and you do all the lifestyle, um, kind of adding the soul into the home, it's not done until that, until that's done. And that's constantly evolving too, as you collect art and as you rotate things in and out with styling and accessories, um, art plays such a huge part in making your house feel like a home and making it feel like you. I think a really great place to get art is when you're traveling. So even if you don't know in your own city where to purchase art at, Mm -hmm. It will remind you of that moment or that time when you're in Venice and you're walking the streets and there was this, you know, this starving artist and he was, you know, sharing his sketches, you know, um, of a certain scene by the river. And that's a really great place to pick up something like that, roll it up in, in a tube and ship it back to yourself or carry it home with you. And then when you get it matted and framed back in your city then it will always remind you of that moment that you had. And so um, I, when, when we're working with clients, oftentimes they'll say, oh, we're getting ready to go on a trip. And so let us see what we can find. And we're always really um, advocates of them looking for artists in the city that whether you go to a gallery or you meet an artist on the street or whatever, I think it's a great way to find art. So if you feel stumped by what do I have in my own hometown Maybe maybe take a look where you're next traveling and see what galleries are there or what opportunities there are. Or talk to um, the person at the front desk of the hotel that you're staying at. Or if you're staying in an Airbnb, you could talk to the owners of what galleries there are and that you're really looking for art, um, something to remember your trip by. Yeah, I love that thing about the travel. It reminded me um, when I was doing my internship. I did an internship in college in Scotland. And Malcolm Duffin, the senior designer there, he told me when we were doing a project. He's like, you would never put a picture of Windsor Castle inside Windsor Castle. Mm -hmm. You're never going to put a picture of the place you live inside the place you live. Um, Because you want to, you want to be taken to other places, usually in the art or to another moment or to a person. Um, That's why we put art is to remind us of these times in our lives and what we're actually drawn to. Mm -hmm. So again, don't feel like you need to buy aspen trees or if you live, you know, in Aspen yeah. Grove <laughs> or anything, let's, yeah. explore, let's explore. So I think by getting that travel art, that's such a great just way to transport you back to that moment. Yeah. So I find that in the work that we do, most people are stumped by that last layer, that art layer. Mm-hmm. We do more reselections over art than anything than the sofa that they're going to sit on all day. They just, people want art to really mean something to them or they want to have a connection with it in some way. They want to know about the artist. What's the story? What does it mean? And um, so they emotionally really feel like they want to connect with what's on their walls. And it is the thing that's hung at eye level and it impacts the space in such a great way. 
some advice I think could be really helpful would be to look at some of your favorite rooms and notice that the art doesn't actually match the upholstery or the things that are happening. And that's sometimes the great feeling that you're getting back from the room. You might be like uh, that coral piece of art, just set that blue sofa off in a massive way. And you wouldn't know that you're out looking for coral art. But once you start to see some favorite rooms, you'll be like, really keyed into staring at the artwork and you'll notice it doesn't match, but that's the thing that sets it on fire. It's the, the contrast. Um, it's, it's the, um, compliment yep. that it gives to the room. And so sort of notice that if you're sort of stumped over what, what am I looking for in that last layer? And oftentimes it's not tiny. I think a lot of people buy really small art and then it can't impact the room in a big way. And if you wanted it to, then you'd have to hang a lot of other things with it to give it the large imp imprint it needs on that huge wall that you have. People don't ever realize how big of art that they need for a space. Yeah, there's, I mean, some of our vendors in great rooms today, we have some that will make art up to 90 inches wide by like 48 high. So four feet by like eight feet, you know, and sometimes you're looking for things that are massive or you're going to look for two things that will equal that space. So kind of get used to the idea when you're looking at rooms that you love of, oh yeah, that art's really big. I'm looking for big art. You need to sort of have these talks with yourself and I'm looking for color because I need it to make an impact because my room somehow everything in it is taupe. You know what I mean? And so you're like, I need something with impact. I need something colorful. I need something large. So kind of talk yourself through some of these things. Cause you might have a habit of buying eight by 10, everything in eight by 10 or 11 by 14. And it will just never make a statement in your great room or your family room. No, we talk about the rug being the largest piece of artwork, but again, like yeah. between the rug and the things that you put on your wall, that is the pulse of the room. Um, we were doing a presentation actually for a client yesterday, Taylor, and yeah. um, it was just, it was a kind of a playroom for her kids, but it was actually a spot where like they go and they gather as a family and watch movies at night and things. And so it could be, I'm like, do you want to take it really playful or do you want to take it, you know, as your kids grow up, it's just something that you guys just like really love to be in that can be kind of this living, growing space. And so even though the furniture was the same with either regard, we did two art packages mm -hmm. to kind of show her like, this is one that's a little bit bright and more fun and more punchy, or this is something that kind of gets along with kind of the stuff that you've been drawn to throughout the rest of your house. And it took her a second to be like, what do I want this room to be? Mm -hmm. But it was interesting that nothing else changed, like the whole thing. Yeah. Nothing changed, but the art completely changed the temperature of what, what would happen in that room. And so that was for her to kind of decide about her family. How do you live in this room? What do you want it to feel like? The art will impact that. So. Mm, love that. Yeah. I, I have something to add about like the traveling. Um, yeah. I found this like really cool artist. So I, my recommendation would be like when you are traveling and you, you know, see a gallery or um, is to maybe like talk to the artist himself or the person representing the gallery. Cause I was in Nassau and I met this guy and he was just like this poor like artist and he uh, would go around the island. He was a, a native there and he would like use things. So like a piece of driftwood that like came up or like this like old building like had crumbled. And so he used like bricks or this part of a wall and he would like, you know, paint on it and created his art with that. And I thought that like was really cool to me. It connected me to that story. Mm -hmm. And I would have never known that if I hadn't talked to him. And so that's why I bought a piece of art from him. So that's like what connected me was the story. And I've found since then, like, I'm just all about the story and the journey, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. So, yeah, I love that. I love that. Yeah. Knowing, I think knowing that kind of has a soul. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, when once you know, you know the artist or about the artist, you admire the artist, like the art becomes a lot more. Mm -hmm. And even though we all interpret one piece, we could all look at one piece of art and have completely different interpretations of the art because we have different lives. Yeah. There's different memories that are evoked when we look at art. Um, pay attention to that. How does the art make you feel? And even better, if you can talk to the artist and find out why, like what inspired them or, or look them up, <laughs> you know, like there's so much information on the internet to understand more about the artists and about their lives to start to appreciate just the layers of that art. Mm -hmm. It's really, really fascinating. And, 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 so and to create a, a connection too. Yeah, like, yeah. 100%. Yeah. And like 
that then you, then I realized what did resonate with me. So I was able to kind of like create a path like, Oh, this is, this is what, um, is important to me and what I like. So, mm-hmm. you know, kind of created a path for my future, I guess, in purchasing yeah. art. That's great. And you mentioned like he took old bricks or artifacts or driftwood or whatever. Um, one of the notes that we have here is about framing objects. And so it doesn't just have to be a drawing or a painting um, or something flat that is art. It can be a three-dimensional object. Um, one of the things that we were given as a gift when we were at Market Last from one of our rug vendors, they had these little tiny prayer rugs, um, just small little teeny tiny carpets, maybe like one foot by two feet at the most, maybe even like 18 inches were just big enough to kneel on. Little tiny hand knotted rugs from like the 1950s. 60s. Um, anyway, he was like, please take one as a gift, you know, and, and I remember us being excited thinking this would be really cool framed, you know, this little tiny textile of a thing. Um, oftentimes when we're trying to figure out the art for a home, you can't just continue to hang flat things. You're like, we need wall sculpture. We need something dimensional. We need, um, I don't know. There's a lot of like different artist installations that you can do. Once we did one called beer can butterflies and the artist takes, um, old, um, pop cans, beer cans, whatever. And he cuts these butterflies from them, sprays them all a color and then installs them on these little tiny wire. And they, even some of them articulate when you walk by, like the wind will kind of make them flutter a little and some are just more stationed and he clusters the butterflies in some areas and then he dithers them out. So there's not as many and then clusters them again. And you're like, what is happening on the wall? Another vendor of ours from metal also makes large um, flowers. Mm -hmm. And so we've used those in kids' bedrooms and they look incredible and they're dimensional and they add a lot of interest. And then we can use flat art on other walls, but to really make your home feel designed and interesting, you've got to have a great art collection and it doesn't just have to be um, one dimensional. No, and it shouldn't be. You always want to have different mediums. So we talk about a lot about gloppy oils on here. Mm-hmm. We all love gloppy oils, but we also love sketches and we love almost the studies that like artists do, like yeah. the backstory before they did the oil. I think that's always so fun to see just like the colors as they're kind of like chopping things to see what actually is blending together. It's so fun to see the journey of that, of a piece, even if it's like you're getting it in its first draft. Yeah. Is magical. And to just, yeah, you always want to have different mediums, including the three dimensional thing um, with your rug. I saw another picture the other day where it looked like it was a textile, you know, mm-hmm. it was actually, it wasn't a rug, but it was actual, like almost like a tapestry. And we all have seen mm-hmm. tapestries hung just on their own, no frame, which is really, that's a fun trick. Obviously it's super old school, but this one was framed a tapestry, but it was in acrylic. So it kind of gave it a little bit of a mm, modern edge, cool. a little bit of gloss Yeah, on top of it on top of something that we traditionally see just hanging exposed and sometimes getting dusty. So anyway, so think about things that you have, things that have been passed on to you. Yeah. I think is a really interesting thing. I think our parents would gladly, you know, un- <laughs> give, a, give us things if they knew that we would appreciate it. So next time you're in your mother's house and you see something that, you know, you grew up looking at that you love, say, mom, put my name on the back of that because <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of this time. Or reminds me of you or that story you told that one time. So again, with the emotion of knowing the artist, also no, the emotion of knowing, you know, if that's touched you at some point in your life, try and find something that will, again, bring that memory back to you mm-hmm. and put it in your hallways. Yeah. That's great. Uh, we have another question from at Erin Aline, and she asks how to choose which art to go in the same room should they be similar colors? So like in, let's just say the living room, you're going to have multiple pieces of art in there. You might have a pair of sconces um, flanking the fireplace and you need something to put in between those sconces. You probably have a big moment above your sofa. You probably have an adjacent wall that could also use a little something. How do we choose and collect the things that are all going to live together in the same room? I think first, I mean, if we're, when we're designing, we're obviously starting a little bit more from scratch. And so we can live in this ideal world where we're looking at all these planes and saying, okay, above the sofa, we need one big Mm ta-da, one big moment. And we want it to be more landscape, landscape view. Um, So it kind of stretches from the side of the side on the sofa above, 
maybe above the mantle, we're like, actually, we need a breath. We need to have, maybe we do a mirror and we just layer art. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we love to do too, is just layering art, whether it's over mirrors or even sometimes just leaning on the floor behind something just to make it feel, you have so much art, you you don't even have walls to hang it on. Yeah. You're just starting to lean in. You're a great collector. You're just a great collector. You go so many places, you're so interesting. You have such a beautiful mind. (laughs) Exactly, you're gorgeous. (laughs) So knowing that we have a big piece of art happening over the sofa, maybe on the opposite wall, we're going to do a series, you know, mm-hmm. where we have like two or four of something. So we're not seeing the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's how we kind of like start it. I think it's just like figuring out orientation of kind of what we want mm-hmm. scale wise, the pieces to be, and then we st- start searching. Yeah. And, and I think we're also going to look like maybe over the mantle yeah. where you're saying we're going to layer art on top of maybe a mirror. We're going to say, let's maybe not make that mirror a square because yeah. all these art pieces so far are either square or rectangle. So let's look for a round mirror to give it, you know, a break from yeah. another hard angle. Yeah. And then layering a piece of art that is a rectangle on top of it will be interesting. Yep. When, yep. when gathering art to like, uh, to hang, is there s- such thing as like it being too eclectic? Like, you know, like you're just barely saying it doesn't like need It looks match. like a garage yeah, sale. That's, that, that's kind of what, that's what you're worried at. about, huh? Yeah. Corey and, yeah. and husbands everywhere. I, I yeah. was just, I, I was trying to find a nice way of saying that. Yeah, so no, I, I think that that's a really intelligent question. And we are often paying attention to that. And there's, I think a barometer that lives inside each of us because of where we've lived, how we've lived, how our parents lived. Um, we've all had these experiences and each of us have a meter that goes off earlier than the other person, depending on maybe your mom was a hoarder and you're like, no, it's too much. I need more edit. And then, and it's, it's different. So we can't give you a hard, fast rule for what you're going to like based on your life experience. Um, some of us are going to be way more collected than others and others are just going to feel better not even having a piece of art leaning against that mirror. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or if it is, it's got to be a note that really hits well with you. And maybe for you, you're going to get a guitar pick from your favorite, um, guitarist Mm -hmm. framed in a little tiny shadow box with a lot of mat. You know what I mean? And that's going to be super edited and very intimate little detail that you can deal with, um, an edit of a little guitar pick framed with a simple mirror where Suzanne Hall is going to love more is more and less is a bore. You know, she, you're going to love, yeah, yeah you're going to love like a yard sale. <laughs> all the layers and no, but you love, yeah. you love, and Suzanne loves a subject in her art. She doesn't True. like being alone. So if you walk in her home, you're never going to be alone, even if you're the only one there because Still there's, ice staring at there's you. donkeys, there's, there's humans, there's, I don't know, tell them all the subjects that you live with. I know. Let me walk through. Yeah. And they all have a story. Like there's, I was looking through it this morning before I came in to just be like, now, which one is my favorite? Do I have a favorite? And yeah, there's like pieces from when Tom's been in Guatemala and he's been like on his way to the airport and he picks something up and it's a gloppy little oil of like a bullfight bullfighter. And then there's a self portrait of an artist that we know, like right when you walk in the door and it has his story, but he's breathing fire Mm -hmm. and he has a good boy hat on. And then you walk through and you have, Gosh, you have a, a, a little oil of a, um, I think I got it from Caitlin Connolly. And it was just, it's, she comforted herself with a hand quilted blanket mm-hmm. is what it's called. But it was kind of a little oil study that she did before she painted the big one. So they're all, they all evoke like a time or a event in my life. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you're right. They are all people. And I don't think I knew that, that I loved a subject so much. And then as I've collected, I'm like, my gosh, I am, I have people everywhere in here. And it is because I don't like to be alone. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm a people person. I'm an extrovert. That's where I get my energy. Mm-hmm. And so that's what feeds my energy at home too, is just my art. Yeah. So. Yeah. And it's so fun to walk through and it's got like a real spirit to it. And they're like, Ooh, tell me his story or her story. And, and you've rescued all these wonderful people along the way and, and their stories now live within your house, which is super fun, but how to make all these things live in the same room. Um, we often will say we've already got a contemporary piece, maybe over the sofas and it's a painting. So maybe now let's go for photography on a different wall. We try to go with some different mediums just to make it look more authentic, more interesting and believable as a collection, especially some people don't have the time to shop. They work really hard. They just need this designer to come in and make their home feel like a home. 
So just by ways of us collecting it for them, we'll often choose different mediums, shapes and sizes to really give it a collected feel and never use like the same this like the same contemporary artist for all four walls. We wouldn't ever do that. Yeah. And that's when it starts to, when you do see someone that's like, Oh, I love abstracts. That's the only thing I love. Mm-hmm. They have it on every single wall. It can, it will start to feel flat. It'll mm-hmm. start to feel tired and it starts to feel a little bit like a, you know, like a dentist office or somewhere, a commercial space that they just like got stock art and they just threw it up on the wall and it's all just, I don't know, unemotional and does nothing for you or for the space when you walk through it, um, that's that's what will happen if you kind of stick to the same medium. So I do think it's important to change up the medium, um, like we've been talking about. Yeah, and we will always, and that's what maybe when we're when we're designing a room, that's what our eyes crave. You know, just in like putting it together, we're like, okay, we need some a three dimensional object. Let's like look at bugs. Let's look at you know crystals. Let's mm-hmm. we need something that's going to project from the wall to get back to the space. It's not another piece a flat art or there's not glass in front of it because mm-hmm. I want to see it because I'm going to be up close to it. And so anyway, just look for those. Um, yeah. Just those different mediums that complement each other. Yeah. And if you're scared, if you have like something that's really colorful, maybe you do something that's more graphic and more black and white, you know, whether it's photography, like you mm-hmm. said, Jess, or whether it's just, it's simple line, line work, you know, um, I think that's a nice like breath. So not everything is overwhelming. Yeah. That's great. Um, I think let's talk for a minute about like favorite places to get art or maybe get inspired by art. If you're just barely beginning your art journey. Um, one of the places that I really, really am, I love my spirit loves the feeling that I get when I look at, there's a, one of the vendors that we shop at when we're at market, um, Highland house is the name of the furniture brand. And they have a gallery come in and do the walls of their furniture showroom and it's all original art. And it's, um, the name of the place is called Blueprint, B-L-U-E-P-R-I-N-T. On Instagram, their handle is blue underscore um, print underscore store. So Blueprint store. Look that up and then kind of scroll, scroll through it. It's got a lot of personality. There's kind of a fresh, clean vibe to it. It's nothing too heavy and it really makes the rooms feel like they've got a pulse, like they've got a heartbeat and they've got a fresh palette, which I think looks good with any interior and gives it sort of an updated, sort of happy look. You're going to know what feels good to you. Um, So maybe you're a more serious, subdued person and you want more black and white photography. You're not going to like this site at all. But I think if you, the more that you look at art, the more you're going to get a feel for what you do like. And then when you do see it in the world, you're going to be sort of quickened to it and you're going to be like, oh my gosh, that's my style. That's what I like. That's what I've been looking for. So I think it takes a little bit of research and coming to know you and what you want and how you want to live and what you want your house to look like so that when you do get a chance to take the time off from your normal life and wander and and find beautiful art. You'll find it when you're least expecting of it, uh, when you're least expecting it. Um, you'll just be on the journey of your life and then you'll be like, oh my gosh, I have to have you. Like we have to live together. You know, it's it's really fun. Sue, where's your favorite place to look for art? To look, I was, I was saying to anybody that, like for my, me too, if you look on my Pinterest boards, my art folder is probably my largest mm. folder because I'm just always looking at it and always drawn to it. And so, especially if you don't know what you love, I think that's a great way to start. It's just to even hop on Pinterest, especially for that gal that initially said there's no galleries around you. Yeah. Go on Pinterest and just start to look at either at spaces and notice the art, what you're drawn to. And then, but once you start to pin art from artists, if you love Picasso, you'll start, I have a a lot of that on my folder, you'll start, that'll just start populating your feed, that and things like unto it. And so then you'll be like, okay, this really is my style. And then, like you said, when you do see it, you'll be like, we have to live with one another. Mm-hmm. So I know Pinterest, we all use it, but I think it's a great tool. And we have a yeah. really great Pinterest folder yeah. at Alice Lane um, with art um, all saved in it. So you can check that out and yeah. you can follow along. If you're interested in what we're interested in, you'll probably like it. Yeah. Another place I was going to say is um, an app called Live Auctioneers and it's really fun and they have art, they have sculptures, they have rugs, they have all sorts of things that are just original and have a story Mm, and things like there's artists like unto 
Matisse and it'll say in the style of Matisse. And then you just, you auction, it's an auction little house. And so, or there will, there will be actual originals. They're all original artwork, but whether it's in the style of an artist that you love or the actual artist you love, you're going to find stuff. And it's really, it's fun to peruse around there. So yeah, mm. I love live auctioneers. That's great. Another one that we love and sell a lot in the store um, that you could follow on Instagram is Hable Land. And nice. um, those are two sisters that live in Athens, Georgia. And um, it's H-A-B-L-E, Hable, and then Land, L-A-N-D. It's the Hable sisters. And um, Susan Hable is an artist and Kate Hable is her sister that runs the business side of things. And they've designed textiles with her art. They have a line of art through Soitra Marin that we carry. And it's really um, upbeat, happy, um, usually organic. She loves shapes and she loves plants and she has a garden outside her studio behind her home with um, vines that grow and she's really inspired by that and plucks things off and brings it in and and sets about it and to know her is to love her. Her spirit is so joyful and playful and um, little bit retro. Anyway, she's got a really great thing going and her prints just give an, an, a total immediate feeling of happiness and kind of relief from sort of a serious day. How Sue's talked about with that client, they presented to um, just how the art will absolutely change the feeling of the room without changing the furniture. Um, Hable Land is one that will just be a real shot in the arm of happiness, especially if you're living with children or I think women in general just really, really love it. It evokes um, kind of a youthful, playful feeling, wouldn't you say? Yeah. And a looseness that I think we all could use right now. You know, I think sometimes life gets a little serious. So I love, I love Hable Land. Yeah. And that's it a fun one well to with everything. As far as if you were at to yes. add Hable with your current collection, it would work because there is like, there's a, almost a simpleness to it too, just mm -hmm. in its shapes and forms that they get along with things. But yeah, it does. It totally evokes joy. Yeah. 100%. And that's the artist. Totally. So again, the more you know about the artist, I think the more um, you can emotionally connect to art. That's awesome. Let's give them a few tips um, before we let them go. So hanging art. Let's talk about that for a second. We have one girlfriend who's lived in a brand new home for four years. So it's not exactly brand new. Still won't hang art on the walls because she's afraid to put holes in the walls. So we're going to give you a little rule of thumb. Um, Sue, so talk about the art installer and what he taught you. Yes. Okay. So we were doing an art install or just a full install of furniture and art in Washington, DC. And there was this really eccentric, funny art hanger that I contacted to come install the art. And he he was taller and he had a rule for him that he hung things from the floor to the middle of the art. So if you're looking at your piece of art and it's a square where the middle of that piece of art, he would hang at 60 inches is where the middle of the art would hang for his eye level. He's like, oh yeah, it's the same for everybody. That's where I hang everybody's art. But when he hung the first piece of art at 60, I was like, oh no, that's too high. It needs to drop. And so he tried it at 59, then 58 and then 57. And I was like, stop, 57 is right. That's where it needs to go. So for my eye, and I think just for your eye, I think just in general, I think we look at art and how how we want to see art in a room the same way. 57 inches is my, I found that is my magic number from the floor mm -hmm. to the middle of your art. And that just puts it at a nice space, whether you're short, whether you're tall. How tall are you, Sue Hall? I'm almost 5'5". Five five. Okay. So that kind of gives you an idea. Yeah. This gentleman was six foot. He was, yeah. He was a taller gentleman. Okay. And, and he liked it at five foot or uh -huh. 60 inches off the ground. Sue is almost five, five and likes it at 57 inches. So this is really important ladies and gentlemen, because this is one of the reasons why husbands and wives or partners fight in life is about cause of divorce. Everybody <laughs> is about the height of the artwork. And so if you know, going into it, that it's going to be between 57 and 60 inches, then he doesn't need to start by hanging the art over his head. You know what I mean? You can just start in that line and just sort of have, we use chalk um, here at the store and on installs, just white chalk to mark the bottom of the frame where we want it. And then they can do the math to figure out where the, the D rings are hanging or if there's a wire, then where that's going to sort of peak in the middle, where to put that nail. Mm -hmm. There's also really great museum quality um, hangers that are just like those, are they called OOK? O -O it's like a little hook and it has two tiny little pinholes. Yeah. 
Um, I would say those also save marriages, especially if you're nervous about hanging something on the walls. They will not work, I'm pretty sure, with the double D-rings because you might be able to see Mm -hmm. it sort of splay out. Uh, Unless you're using the single hook, you probably don't need the double hook for the double D. Anyway, look into those little hangers and then um, decide. You guys can kind of decide if you like your art between 57 and 60 inches. Once you know what your number is, that's the rule for the rest of the house. And that makes hanging art a lot easier. If you're hanging two pieces together, um, we usually like about two inches in between those pieces of art. So whether that be a diptych over the sofa, two big pieces of art, we're still only going to put two inches in between. Does that matter how big the art piece is? Does that change? Not a lot. It actually doesn't matter a lot. People hang everything too high and they hang things too far apart. Mm -hmm. So we like them to have a really nice relationship. In a gallery wall, you might tighten up some small pieces together you might not have as big of a two inch gap, but it's it probably won't go any smaller than an inch. It's usually for us, it's usually between an inch and a half to two inches on just as a rule for everything, just for an adequate breathing room mm-hmm. around a piece. Yeah. So. I, I thought of one before we move on to the, to the yeah. others that um, we like briefly talked about before, but maybe like create an expectation for yourself that artwork isn't cheap. So like, don't, Ooh, don't go in smart. thinking like, oh, I'm going to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Wise man. $60 is going to, you know, like get me everything I want. Cause it's not going to happen. Hobby Lobby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, especially when you go into like, if you find a piece of art that needs to be framed, that's going to be, yeah. you know, the framing itself is going to be a couple hundred dollars probably. Right. What, oh what'd you say? yeah. Well, yeah. More, way more. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Depending on the size of the art, mm-hmm. but if you need like, a big sofa sized piece of art, then you're going to be, you know, well over a thousand dollars to mat and frame that just in the materials and labor alone of framing. That's not even the art. Yeah. So, but that's why it also makes sense that if you are in your travels, maybe don't, you don't need to buy anything that's framed already. You just need the art itself. Cause then you can do all that heavy breakable stuff. Once you get back to your city and understand exactly where it's going to go. Exactly. And then you'll know. It. Yeah. And how big your mat wants to be and how, what, what that frame needs to be. Yeah. And like Suze has, um, like she has a smaller piece of art, but she matted it really in a big way and weighted it at the bottom. Um, weighted it at the top. Oh, weighted it at the top. Do you guys know what we're talking about when we say weighted? Um, when you mat, you can like do four inches all the way around, or you can do, you can sort of weight the mat differently, but Suze went big guns on this one. It's really artsy. How much mat did you use at the top versus the bottom? I want to say there's probably like two feet on the top and then there's probably like Maybe a foot, maybe foot to 16, 14, 16 inches at the bottom. Of mat. So of mat. Yeah. Just mat on the, and the bottom and the sides are the same, but the top is really weighted, which is fun because it brings that picture a little bit more to eye level uh-huh. to where I can appreciate it. So you hung it high and to put the subject. I, mean, I live in, a, I have shorter ceilings, so yeah. um, everybody can see it. But I think in a larger space, I think you'd be able to like go up to it if it wasn't a hallway or wherever it is. And you'd be able to appreciate this sketchy thing that I grabbed at market, actually. Yeah. So, yeah. So the way that you mat and frame it can increase the size of it, which is really, really fun. And I think also think very artsy of you. It feels very designer. It doesn't feel stock sure. or off the shelf. Oh, and yeah. it's, it gives so much more. I think I don't know energy to it too than just matting it to its size. Yeah. I mean, it's probably only eight by ten. And the framing for sure was more expensive than the actual art, but I loved it so much that the whole thing, like it just looks, it looks what it should. Like, yeah. It looks expensive and it looks special, which is what it is. So, yeah. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Corey, our framing and art isn't going to be cheap. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you yeah. do get like an artist study or a little sketch or something in your travels, then when you get home, it might be like Susan saying that Maddie and framing it is more expensive and that's okay. Mm-hmm. That's okay. Or maybe the piece of art is, you know, expensive and from a more well-known artist and, um, and then you'll man frame it. And I mean, it's an investment piece. It will live on forever. And I think if you love it so much, I, I don't know that you'll tire from it, especially if you invest yeah. a great deal in it. Mm-hmm. What were you going to say, Sue? If you frame it cheaply, that special piece of art will look cheap. Oh, amen. So just yeah. be aware of that. You're like, okay, yeah, this I, the investment was the painting. I'll slim down on like the actual frame. I'll just do a black mm-hmm. <laughs> a black little pinstripe of a thing. And then it, it will look like Prince and Plus. Like, yeah, it, it, yeah, it's a big bummer. And it's a disadvantage <laughs> for the art and the artist and the experience that you had when you bought it. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, so, wait, yeah. it's like wearing cheap shoes. It you know, is. you just like ruin the whole outfit. It is. Yeah. And we really do feel this is one of the other points too, is that your frame and mat, um, it should be it should be matted for the art, not necessarily for the room. Right. So if you got something down in South America, you're probably going to want to give a little bit of a nod to the style of that painting or whatever is happening in that to like either bring you back to that spot that you bought it or, you know, just again, to just show that it's exotic. Mm -hmm. You, I think that's more interesting too, when it, the frame obviously complements and just adds to the energy of what the art actually is. Yeah. So don't frame it all just so like everything in my house is black. So it's all just going to be in that same black frame. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you're losing out on a lot of interesting points that you could get, could get yeah. um, that feel very designer. So. Yeah. One really atypical framing choice. Um, there's a, you might've seen some of the books from Slim Errands. We sell them here in the store and they are these sort of campy vintage photographs of an old war photographer named Slim Errands. And after he got out of the war, he only wanted to photograph happy things to sort of bring him back to the life from all of the drab black and white, sad photography he was doing of the war. And so he went to Palm Springs and other said destinations. Hollywood. Yeah. Hollywood, the ski slopes and it took pictures of people in, it was at the sixties, fifties and sixties and yeah. fashion was so vibrant and so happy back then, or at least the places he was traveling, people were fully into it and suited yellow bikinis by a bright blue pool. And he has the greatest collection of photographs in books and his, um, prints or his, yeah, his prints of the photography are available, really oversized. But what I'm getting at is the way that he frames these campy old photographs are in high gloss white frames with white mat. And it's really clean. It's very fresh. And it's all about the art. Your eye just focuses on it, but it's in such a glossy way that just really fits the mood of the photograph. And so if you do have modern art, that's something that I'm really feeling right now. I think that we're seeing a lot of like white legs and furniture with jewel tones, um, color paired with white and even high gloss white is super fresh. So that could be really fun to do too. Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for, um, for tuning in today and listening. I hope this helps with your art journey. Don't be afraid to invest in art. It's really going to be like the heartbeat in your home. Talk to you next time. Hey, thanks for listening. If you like our show, please leave a five-star rating. 